that's in there is implicitly the density under reservoir conditions. So when I do that, putting everything in, I'll have And just to make things simple, I'll use the density of water. So we're talking about like flow in an aquifer, if you will. So, that, so we have the formation volume factor of water. So we have this equation. It doesn't change if it's oil or gas. I mean, I just had to, I just picked one, so that wasn't you know wasn't carrying the L around. Okay, now let's look at this term. So if I, you know, the the porosity, right, the porosity is really, I mean, we just wrote it like this, but it's, it's really a function of the pressure, right? If I increase the pore pressure, I'm going to change the porosity. I'm going to, or if I decrease it, given that the reservoir is under stress, the pores will collapse a little bit, get smaller, right? So, so the pore pressure is a function, I mean, the, the porosity is a function of pressure, which is a function of time, right? So if I then use the chain rule to expand this term, I get and that that comes from, you know, the, that the if I want to take the, the the partial derivative of this with respect to time, then I have something like this, right? Because the porosity is a function of pressure, which is a function of time. So then I can expand that like this. And then, if you remember from petrophysics, these two terms should look close to something that you know, right? So this first term is is it's kind of like the compressibility, right, of the rock, because the change in porosity is a function of pressure, right? Sort of the compressibility of the rock, and the formation of volume. And then over here you have the the change in the formation volume factor, or one over it, as a function of pressure. Well, formation volume factor is a function of fluid density, right? So you have the, the change in fluid density as a function of pressure. That's sort of the compressibility of the fluid, right? And that's not exactly what they are, but with a little bit of manipulation, you can get the... So if you have the, the fluid compressibility actually is one over the porosity times the change in porosity, I'm sorry, the, 
The compressibility of the rock is 1 over the porosity times the change in porosity with respect to pressure. And the compressibility of the fluid is the formation volume factor Those two things. Okay. Uh, oh, quickly. I mean, you have this. You'll have them do. Quickly. If you want to write, write. You'll have the PDFs there. So given those definitions, I can manipulate the equations such that I do have compressibility of the rock plus compressibility of the fluid. And those two things I'll call the total compressibility. Right. So that's equal to So then if I, I plug that back into first equation, I have that. Now I'm going to, over here on the left side, over on the left side, I'm going to use the, the product rule, right? So th the derivative of a product is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second, right? So just from calculus. I'm going to assume that the permeability and the viscosity are not functions of space when I do this. Now I have this. And then I'm going to use the on this on this term right here, I'm going to use the chain rule because again, the formation volume factor is a function of fluid density, which is a function of pressure. Okay. Which is a function of space. So, so I'm going to use the chain rule there. To write this, And this thing is compressibility of the fluid. 
So for if we, assume, if we assume that the compressibility of the fluid is small, so if the compressibility of the fluid is small, it's approximately zero, then this term goes away, and you're finally left with that guy. And that's sort of this final form of our equation under those assumptions. However, if we just rearrange this slightly by, if we uh, multiply by s both sides of the equation by mu over k, then we get an equation that looks something like this. And if we define a parameter, if we de define a parameter I mean, this is just a constant, right? So if we just say that alpha is equal to k dw over mu dct, then we get this equation. And I'm also going to make the assumption that there's no source term. There's no source or sink. And so under those special cases, we result in this thing called, in petroleum engineering, we call it the diffusivity equation. Right. In other disciplines, you'd see this often called the heat equation. Because, and that's that's something you know when I when I talk about how are we doing on time? Oh, we still got a lot of time. Uh, that's something you know when I when I was introducing myself earlier, I said my sort of specialty is in the numerical solution of partial differential equations. What the longer you do this, that what you learn is that with a few manipulations, a lot of physics can be solved by a few sets of differential equations, kind of specialized or you know, generic ones. And this happens to be a generic one. We call it the diffusivity equation or the heat equation. This is one partial differential equation that we can actually have an analytic solution to for certain boundary value problems. So, so for certain boundary conditions, we can actually solve that thing in closed form. It's one of the very few. Oh, well, let's see. It should still be there, sorry. Right here. It should still be there. However, in the, in the, all right, so then in the case that, let's do this. If we first assume that there's no source term, then we have the formation volume factor on both sides of the equation, and so we can get rid of it there, and we can get rid of it there. Okay. So yeah, so the point I was making is, you know, 
a lot of these equations that describe different transport phenomena, heat, mass, whatever, they're really just the same equation when you put them in generic form. And the generic form is where you have this parameter alpha that sort of dictates the physics of the problem. In this case, it's flow in a porous media, but with a different alpha, and if P were temperature, that same exact equation would also govern the transport of heat in a one-dimensional media. So if you have like a long bar of steel, you could actually solve the same equation and predict the heat transport uh, via these same equations. So um, 